Okay. Hello, my kaku. Welcome to our A'a uh, Iko Lelo uh, virtual Hawaiian language class. Okay, kala Ivakalu Kumakolo Omalaki, March 23rd. Um, Ahepo Alua Keia, it's a Tuesday, and we're going to be going over Opa'a number 23 in our series. Um, before I forget, I just wanted to let you guys know that next week um, we're not going to have class. I'm going to be on vacation. I know Stacy always tells me to take a break, so I'm going to take one break and go Big Island. So, yeah, there we go. But we'll be back the week after. So there's no sign up in the, in the links. Um, but no worries, I'll, I'll get it to you guys um, next week, okay? Uh, but yeah, today's lesson again about Aloha Aina, and then we're gonna have a, more of a talk story towards the end of um, the lesson, so good fun. Our friend will be joining us in a little bit. Her name is Makana Riley. Um, looking forward to that. Okay, so Aloha Mai Kako and Aloha Mana. Again, welcome to our class. Uh, if you guys can put your name or answer your questions, Ovai Koi Noa and Noho Oi Ihea. Um, in the chat for me publicly so everyone can see. And if you're a new Haumana, just put new Haumana in the chat too. Um, that kind of helps me to gauge where everyone is at um, for tonight's class. Okay, and if you're joining me for the first time and you're like, who's this person? Aloha mai, my name is Kumu Kanuwala Solatorio. Um, here as your Kumu, but also a Haumana. I learn a lot from everyone in this room, so thank you. And then I'm joining from Kevalu Uta on the island of Oahu. Okay. Alrighty. Um, I'm gonna call on. I think we have an. I'm gonna ask if Jamie, you think you can read these for us? I know you're on your phone, but if you can see it, um, that would help. It's just our loina, our values that we follow throughout the class. Okay. Um, Either Jamie Lee or, oh, okay. Wait, we lost her. Oh, she just left. Shoot. Oh, don't be scared. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's just call on um, Lehua. Would you mind reading this for us? Um, so there's two Lehuas. So if I say Lehua, um, that's Oahu Lehua, and then Lehua Kimura is Japan Lehua. Okay. <laughs> Um, we will practice the following values in this class. Aloha ke kahi ke kahi. Love one another. We are an ohana. Uh, ho'i'i, ho'ihiaku, ho'ihimai. Be respectful on camera and in the chat. E kulia i kanu'u. Strive to be the best you can be. Aaika Olelo, Mai Hila Hila. Dare to speak, no be shame. Mahalo. Thank you. Okay, and then let's get into our Oli Kunihi Kamona. Um, anyone want to start us off today? If not, I can. Tammy, yeah. Okay, bear with me. Kunihi Kamona. Pa. Kunihi kamauna i kalaie, o vai ale ale lai wai lua, u ki ae lai kalani ka papa a wai o kawai ki ni, a lai ae lai no no na lo kai puha a kalau la ma u ka o ka pa ae, mai pa i kaleo. He ole ka he a mai e. E he a ike kanaka e kumu ma loko, e hana e e a hewe koha, e ye no kukula o ka le o a he leo vale no e. That's how it's done, Tammy. Let's give her a pai pai ni ma mahalo. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, right into our lesson. Which is Aloha Aina. And you guys, you know, you heard Aloha Aina before, but Eho Pidi Mai, repeat after me Aloha Aina. Okay, Aloha Aina. And our phrase um, coming from the great Joseph Navahi is Ke Aloha Aina, Hea Haia. Ke Aloha Aina, Hea Haia. Can you read this for us, please, um, Henesis? 
Ok. Que aloja a Ina, que a ella, que a ella. Look for the lamb, what is this? Okay. So, um, uh, another question is, what does this Ola Luna Ea mean to you? Specifically, what does Aloha Aina mean to you? Um, and how do you guys show your love for the land? Or how do you guys show patriotism? Uh, many different definitions of the word Aloha Aina, or the phrase Aloha Aina. So yeah, how do you guys show Aloha Aina? And what does Aloha Aina mean to you? For me, particularly, it's, um, you know, how I am able to teach Ola Aloha Vai, And that's how I show my love for the land because you know, it may seem too separate, but especially Hawaii culture, a lot of indigenous language, um, cultures, language, and Aina, and culture all tie in all together. So it's a perfect avenue for us um, to meld the two. Aloha Aina, culture, land, language, all together. Um, and the ways I show Aloha Aina is, um, I guess particular for me is for um, Hakua, the way I hakumele, I can write songs for the different land features that we have. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna be continuing writing songs for all the Aina that I can. Yeah. So yeah, if you guys can put your answers, it doesn't have to be too long, um, just simple stuff. Yeah, respect the land, take care of it, care for others, show your love for the land. Um, learning the Hawaiian culture and language, exactly. Oh, Erika, can you read yours, please? It was a bad time to put some food in my mouth. Um, so I teach a class on sustainability. And in that class, we literally just talked about what an aloha in education would look like today. So just through teaching my homeowner to ask these questions, these very questions, and think about it is part of my way of paying it forward. Awesome. Uh, Bianca, if you can read yours. All right, I have a little typo, but you guys know what I mean. Um, yeah, I, I try and like put my money towards, I guess, like any type of like local farms here to try and um, sort of encourage locally grown products. And then also like just take care of my garden here and try and um, plant like things for future tenants that they can eat and all that. Cool. Yeah. And there's no right or wrong answer to this question, more just, um, you know, seeing whatever, how everyone else on the high knows it. Um, again, it means patriotism, but it also means love for the land and you know, there's a lot of many different other meanings to this, this phrase. All right, so today, um, our answers are going to be very simple, um, but we're gonna be focusing on a lot of different things. So if you don't know any of these place names, a lot of place names and a lot of um, land feature names, if you don't know any of them, just don't worry, just take down the notes, have them ready, and then maybe that'll be homework for you to research um, some of your place names. Okay, um, you'll see as we go along through the lesson. So our first um, slide, can you read this first word for us up here, Carrie? Kulaivi, homeland. Okay, so Kulaivi, if everyone can hold you, my Kulaivi. Okay, and Carrie, can you read the question too? Aya ihe ko Kulaivi, where is your homeland? So, Again, we see aya here, which we learned was kind of the question where. Um, ko, your, and this is a ko because anything having to do, this is an O class, anything having to do with land, um, and of course you can't really choose your homeland because you're born into it, is going to be O class. And then kulaivi, homeland. So, simple answer, O blank, ku'u kulaivi. And normally, for me, I would put O Hawaii ku'u kulaivi, but of course, if you're born somewhere else or, um, you know, born and raised on the continent in another country, please um, put that. So if everyone can answer that in the chat for me, or um, aye here ko kula ivi, and then you can type it out. Yes, good, Stephanie, exactly. Or France ko kula ivi, or Mexico. Yeah, and um, Stephanie, I'll give you France um, is Palani in Hawaiian, if that helps. Palani. Oh, so it could be Opalani Kuukulai, if that makes sense. Yeah. So a lot of different, um, we're going to be doing a lot in the chat, but it's all simple stuff like this. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm going to call on Milinani. Um, I hear Kuukulai. Kuukulai. 
Sorry, one more time. Okay, mahalo. And uh, let's go to um, Kailani. Aya ihea kula ivi. Oh, uh, Puerto Vallarta, Kukula Ipi. Okay, okay, cool. Um, and Stephanie, are you here, Kukula Ipi? Oh, France, Kukula Ipi. Okay, cool. Kukula Ipi. Oh, France, Kukula Ipi. Okay, and this is easy, simple, um, and then we'll just keep doing this pattern throughout the whole um, class. Easy stuff. Okay, next one is your. Um, this done. Can you give us um, the phrase or the word up here? Mokopuni. And that means? Island. Okay. And what is our question that we have? Mokamokopuni hair my boy. In the English, please. Which island are you from? Okay. So another easy one. And I know we're not all from an island but if you do think about it we kind of are like every content every mass of land is an island in some way shape or form um so yeah the answer is simple again o blank kuumokupuni so mine would be o oahu kuumokupuni okay cool carly yeah good amelika um, maui oahu easy stuff let me know if I'm going too fast. I mean, it shouldn't be, because these are pretty simple enough, yeah? Okay, cool. April. Nokomoku puni hea mai oi. O oahu ku'u moku puni. Okay, cool. And you know how normally um, when you hear no hea mai oi, you would start with no hea. Um, I just use that as a question, but the answer is just going to be like, you know, my island is... Oahu, Kauai, whatever. Okay, um, April, I'm gonna have you ask um, Pamela. Aloha, Pamela. Pa Pamela, um, noka moku puni hea mai oi. O Amelika ku'u moku puni. Okay, yeah, cool. And if you wanted to say South, you can say Hema, Amelika Hema, or South America. Okay, good. Easy stuff so far, yeah. But, um, you know, all important because, again, this is how we show our aloha aina is by calling out the names for our, um, our place names that are important to us that we have connection to. Okay, next word coming up here. Let's jump to um, Shannon. Uh, Moku for your district. Okay, and then, you know, this may seem, I mean, it's very prevalent here in Oahu, or here in, what's it called, the, the Hawaiian Islands, but, I mean, all, everywhere around here has a district, you know, every country, state, maybe, there's district names. So if you can figure out your district, wherever you're at, um, that kind of helps. And, you know, you can be the judge of that district and the moku. So, Nokomoku hea mai oi, which district are you from? Shannon, can you read that question for us too? Nokomoku hea mai oi. Okay, yeah. So, which district are you from? Oh, which district are you from? Yeah, no worries. And if you don't know what it is um, on Oahu, you can just leave it blank or just take a guess. I see Koolau Poco. I see, yep, northwest side of Chicago. That totally works. Um, Puna, Waianae. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll make that. Oh, Amelika Hema would be, um, or sorry, Amelika Vaina would be Central America. And you know, Humo? Yes, Mililani. The difference between district and Ahupua. Yeah, so district would be um, the more broader there's six districts on Oahu. Oh, mine is Kolaupoko then. Yeah. I think uh Mililani you'd be considered Wailua, maybe. 
Because you're Hale Eva, yeah? Yeah, I think you're Waialua. So yeah. That would be your Moku Puni. Or your Moku, sorry. And then town, if you didn't know, town's district is Kona. We have a Kona on Oahu. Thank you, Erika. Good job. Sometimes they this this define your your district by where your post you receive postal. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a good um comparison if that helps you guys. Okay. Huh? Thank you. Um let's jump to how oli nokomoku here my oi. I call my. Oh, there, sorry. Ah. Oh, Eva Kuumoku. Okay. Can you ask Stacy, please? Ask who? Uh, Stacy. Yeah. Stacy. Aloha, Aloha. Hi, Stacy. Aloha. Um, Nokomoku here, my oi. Oh, Honolulu Kuumoku. Yeah, okay. I, th that works too. Um, if that's what you chose, again, Kona would be oh. the name. But Honolulu works. Honolulu totally works. Yeah. Okay. Then can you ask, Stacy? Can you ask everyone? And then, yeah. Did you say everyone? Yeah. Oh. Uh. Aloha kako no kamoku hea mai oi. Okay, and everyone turn on your mic and just say your answer. Yeah, that's our new thing. If you, if you didn't realize, we've been doing that in the B class. So just so everyone can practice saying it. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. Um, a little bit smaller. We're jumping to Ahapua. And if you, again, if you don't know, um, you can ask, but it's mostly going to be your city that you're in. So, Honolulu, uh, not Honolulu, right? Mm. Um, Haleiwa, you know, Kaneohe, those are all considered Ahapua. Uh, maybe a little bit different on the continent and in Mexico, but you guys can choose whatever your, maybe your city, you can go with that for Ahapua. Okay? So our question, can you give us the question? Um, we didn't need to go yet. Pumohala, uh, can you read this for us? Okay, aho pu'ua, aho pu'ua, hey, am my oe, oe. So which land division are you from? And again, like how you even choosing um, north or how you said in Chicago, you can choose whatever works for you. A okay. little bit, okay. yeah. Do you want me to read it? Uh, yeah, if you can read it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Northwest Side, Ku'u, Ahu, Pua, Ah. Yeah. Pua, right. ah. Okay. Um, Erika, you'd be considered Manoa. Manoa is the Ahupua. And again, Ahupua is the land division stretching from mountain to the sea. In the olden days in Hawaii, the you know, all of your resources were in that ahupua. You would have everything from your fish, kai, to your holoholona and all your, um, you know, pua'a, all that mauka. And then in the middle region, your kula would be your, your plants, your kalo, all of your crops. So that whole land division would, you know, nourish and sustain the whole community that lived there back in the day. Okay, cool. Um, let's jump to Lena Ala. Nokia hupua a hea mai oe. Oh, I'm an ala kuu a hupua a. Like, can you ask Car Car? Aloha, Carly. Nokia hupua a hea mai oe. Oh, Los Angeles kuu a hupua a. That works. And can you ask Haley? Um, uh, Haley, no ke ahu poaha hea mai oi. No kane oe ku ahu poaha. Okay, and can you ask everyone? 
Hey, everyone. No, ke aupa hea mai oi. Stephanie, what did you choose? Or no ke aupa hea mai oi? Okay, cool. Love these names. So cool. Okay. All right. Aina, I'm going to leave it because it's pretty much the same. Um, but just know Aina is there when you guys do your lesson. Uh, okay. Here's a more uh, specific. For each district, there's definitely going to be rain names. And can you give us this word right here, Lehua? Lehua Oahu. Hua. <laughs> and that means? Rain. Okay. And then what is the question? Keha kainoa o koua. Good. So what is the name of your oh, rain? I call my, what, is, what is the name of your rain? You're good. You're good. Okay. So again, this is kind of depending where you're from. Definitely each Alpua, each place, maybe even each Ili, like smaller land divisions, has their own rain name. And if you don't know, just put O, just put blank for now. O blank Kuua, and we'll find it. We'll figure it out together. Um, there's definitely resources out there that can help us with that. But um, who doesn't know their rain name from where they're from? Okay, Erika, yours is Tuahine. I know that. Um, Haley, yours is Apua Kea. Um, Lehua, Kapua, do you know yours? Oh, Apua Kea. So, uh, Lehua, yours is Apua Kea as well. Um, Makamai, I'll find yours out. Kiowao, good. Stephanie, yes. France, I don't know if you guys have rain names, but you can make up a name. <laughs> what is rain in French? Oui. Sorry, one more time. Pluie. That's 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 rad. That's so cool. Pretty, pretty. Okay, I'm not even, <laughs> I don't want to butcher it. But yeah. So again, it's more. Um, maybe if yeah, pluie, pluie. Got it. And Iluvia in Spanish. If you want to just use that as your rain name, that could be it. O pluie, kuua, o Iluvia kuua. Does that make sense? Okay. But everyone else who didn't know theirs, um, I can definitely help you. I have a Puke that can help you guys out, um, which I, I'm going to have to look at it later. But yeah, just write, just write rain in your chat so I know to go back and look for your rain. Yeah. Um, so like if you're talking about like if it's raining outside right now like would you call it that instead of saying what um oh yeah, yeah yeah so it depends because you know every district might have a different type of rain um but generally yours would be a poor care uh so yeah i would i would call it that because then the name of that right. so you wouldn't say oh ua, ku, ua. I would normally just say o oh, apua kea kuua. Does that make sense? So like if you're if you're like do you just use it when you're saying what kind of rain it is or like how would you use it in a sentence like day to day like Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay. So yeah, it was it would be more kind of yeah, what, saying what kind of what the name is, but you could say ke ua ne um, I don't know. So it is rain. The apua kea is raining outside. Does that make sense? I get that's a, an example I can think of. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Kalamai, the when it's asking for inoa for rain or makani. Yeah. It's not asking for a name, name, right? It's asking for like a descriptive verb, right? Um, no. So definitely there is going to be names for the different rains. So you're in Puna, yeah? Yes. Okay, so. For East Maui, it says Uanoi. 
or Maui. Yeah. Yeah. So I can um, look in my book for you for okay. Puna. Because you're Puna, Big Island. Oh, yeah, Big Island. Oh, yeah, yeah. Island. yeah. And Lahaina, I can definitely find for you folks. Ooh, I got some work to do, but I'll definitely look for it afterwards. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, no worries. Mahalo. It's good to know, though, because, you know, some of us who didn't know that we may have a rain name, raise your hand. Yeah, okay. so now we know that there's information for us to look um, outside of what we know. And look what she found, Erika. What is this? There you go. Look at that. We have a lot over here. So what are some of the names that we wanted to find? Kalaheo, I know. Is it, is it searchable? It is. Okay, we have Ku'u, Ku'u Anu for Kalaheo, the reef, Lahaina. We have many different Lahainas. So over here, um, Tamara Montgomery, you can look. Maybe Huli Alopali for Tamara. Um, oh, that's not, sorry. But yeah, you guys can check this out. Thank you, Erika. Uh, hello, Erika. Yeah, this is a big help. Perfect. Okay, so while we're here, let's jump to um, Tamara. Do you know your rain name? I think it is. Oh, yeah. Ma a a a ma a a. Yeah. Okay. So here, how can you know o ua? O ma a a ku ua. Can you ask? Uh, is it can make ma a laya? Like, is ma a laya supposed to be ma a a laya? Yeah, kind of just a shortened version for it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mahalo. Can you ask Kapua Pimentel? O Kapua, hea haka inoa o koua. O apua kea koua. Oh, mahalo. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're just going to jump right to our next one. And that's going to be, we have a few more, but I don't think we're going to try and get to all of them. Let's get to our, you know what, this is one that we all would know. Um, can you read this for us, please? Uh, Makamai. Ekalamai, Mauna, Mountain. We are her call Inoa Oko Mauna. What is the name of your mountain? Okay, good. So, um, again, this, I mean, everyone may have a mountain wherever you're at, but if you don't, whatever the nearest mountain is to you. Yeah? So, Maui, of course, Haleakala, Oahu, Ka'ala, um, Kawaii, Waiale Ale, Stephanie Kanigo, that's cool. Uh, Ajusko, no mountains in Florida, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, Pomohala, Magic Mountain. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Mauna Kea, Wai Ale Ale. Yeah. So, Reef, um, Hea Hakainoa o Kou Mauna. Wai Ale Ale Kou Mauna. Makai. Can you ask um, Lina? I think. Oh, she's hey, Oh, no. Can, can, you know? Hey, Lina girl, how can you know how to Oh, can you ask how to Can you ask Pua Mohala? Aloha e Pua Mohala. How can you know how to know how to know how to know how to Oh, Magic Mountain in Disney, Ku'u Mountain. Love it. No, my Big Thunder Mountain. That's my favorite. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, let's just do one more. Um, hmm, what can we do? Let's do Flower. Yeah, that's a good one. So, uh, give us. Can you give us this word, please, Car Car? Uh, 
Kua. Flower. Okay, and a question? He aha ka ino o kopua. What is the name of your flower? Okay. Okay, pretty simple too. So again, if you live in Hawaii, you have every island has their own flower. But this can be any flower that literally grows right outside your yard. There we have dahlia, we have bougainvillea. Is that bougainvillea? It's called mokihana, ilima, lokelani, yeah. So for me, I'm going to not use ilima. I'm going to say, o kapua melia kuupua. The plumeria is my flower. Hibiscus pualo alo. Yeah, I'll give you the Hawaiian word for that. Pualo alo. Stephanie is hibiscus. Yeah, cool. Yeah, crown. Yeah, pua kalaunu. Antimililani. Pua kalaunu. Is crown flower. Okay. Yeah, let's just go through these real fast. Um, Don, heha kainoa o kopua. Oh, how how hele kopua. Okay, and can you ask uh, Bianca? Aloha, Bianca. Heha kainoa o kopua. O pua um ko ki o ke o ke o. Okay. And can you ask all of us, everyone? Um, um, e, e, uh, oko? Kako. Oh, yeah. Kako. Yeah. Kako. Yeah. E, uh, e kako, um, he, he aha kainoa o kopua. O ilima o kakalana kupua. Nice. Love it. Okay, cool. Um, we're going to come back to this at the end um, because we have a few more. Of course, Kai, Kahawai River, Kahakai, your beach. But again, this can be um, what you guys do for Havina. Um, easy stuff. Yeah, not too hard. Just blank, oh, blank, ku'u, whatever. Yeah? Um, but I wanted to introduce our special guest for today. Oh, oh there she is. I was like, where's she going? Okay, and um, she works for Hawaiian Islands Land Trust. Um, her name is Mokana Riley, and she's the director of Aina Connection uh, for the Kauai region. Um, here's her, the website and her email if um, you wanted to contact her after. But we um, also went to school together at uh, UH Manoa. We were in Olalo Hawaii classes together um, and some Hawaiian studies classes. And I just wanted to invite her because we're actually collaborating with her on, uh, on Instagram. But yeah, she has a lot of um, knowledge about Aina and especially Aloha Aina. And I wanted to definitely um, share the stage with her and, um, you know, just have a conversation with our, our hui tonight. So, Aloha e makana, te hea oi. Aloha, mai kai. Mahalo everyone for um, welcoming me to your space tonight. Um, to just share a little bit and um, yeah, just to share around the work that Hawaiian Islands Land Trust does. And then also just kind of my journey with Olala Hawaii and, you know, persisting on that journey. Um, it's a long journey. So um, yeah, so anyway, my, um, my name is Makana and um, I'm grateful to Kumukahanuola for welcoming me this week to collaborate on some things on social media and then also for his papa, Olala Hawaii. Uh, I personally, um, let's see, Olala Hawaii was actually my first language. My mom raised me um, speaking Hawaiian. She was, my mom was one of the first, within the first few years of the Hawaiian language degree at University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, before it was even really an Olala Hawaii degree, it was like a, it was like a random liberal arts degree um, at that time. Um, and so my mom raised me um, speaking Hawaiian. I went to Punanaleo o Honolulu, uh, and at that time it was the first Punanaleo um, on 
Oahu, and I was a part of the first class there. And then uh, I went to Manoa Elementary after that, so I switched over to Olalo Pelekania, which was a difficult transition for me, and also it was difficult because I didn't fit in. Uh, and so I pushed back uh, against my mom, and I wouldn't speak Hawaiian anymore once I moved to English speaking school. Um, and then I got into Komehameha in seventh grade, and I went there and I took Papa Olala Hawaii as my um, elective. And all through high school, I took Olala Hawaii. Uh, and then I went away to college in Miami, Florida. And the major that I majored in was fine arts, and it didn't require a language. And so I didn't have to take anything. Um, and I finished my bachelor's and moved back home with my boyfriend at the time when I was at school in undergrad. And we moved back home and we were living in Manoa. I grew up in Manoa, so we moved back to Manoa. Um, I started taking care of my grandma at that time. My grandma is from Kauai originally. Our Ohanan Kauai is Palama. And well, while taking care of my grandma, um, realized that I couldn't, I couldn't move out because <laughs> I had to take care of my grandma. So our intention was to move out and, you know, start our careers here in Hawaii after finishing undergrad and getting a place of our own. But my grandma needed care, and so um, my Kane went and got a job, and I ended up getting. I just kind of worked part time jobs for a few years, and I took care of my grandma until. I was hapai with our hiapo, uh, which her name is Lelehune. Actually, her name is Lelehune Anuhea Okiao Pulama. And I named her for the misty rain of Manoa. And the rain in Manoa is Watuahine. I heard you guys were talking about rain, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, and once I was hapai with my hiapo, I, um, recognized that it was my kuleana to raise my kids the way that I was raised um, speaking Hawaiian. And so I actually went back to 101. I went to um, Papa Lala Hawaii 101 at KCC while I was hapai with Lalehune. And um, even though I probably could have tested out, I wanted to just make sure that my kuahu was really, really strong to be able to, I'm sorry, kahua, kuahu kalamai. I'm yeah, like kahua, kahua. brain yeah. farting. Kahua. Um, that um, my kahua was strong enough. You know, I could have tested out probably and gone to like a 300 level, but I just wanted to be intentional about the way that I was learning. And yeah. um, so I eventually, let's see, I took, I took 101 and 102, 201 and 202 at the CCs while I was hapai and after I gave birth, and then I went to UH Manoa, um, and I started taking the higher level, 301, 302, 401, 402. That's I when I learned. ended up having yeah. classes with Kumu no, Kahanwola, no. and maybe like a conversation class or something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But we were in La Lapa's for um, together, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah it, 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 and it then... Um, Go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 because I was just going to say, there's um, some Haumana in here that, like, Lehua, she's teaching her son Hawaiian, um, and then Stacy's Maupuna, they go to Taiopuni and Punanaleo. So, yeah, and, and thank you for speaking on that and bringing that up, too. It's very um, important to share your journey. So, mahalo. Yeah, but yeah, keep going, sorry. Yeah. And then let's see, so as I was taking all of those classes, I was just taking them for credit. I wasn't pursuing a degree um, at all. And then once I finished all the undergrad level classes, I went into um, Puakea Noblemeyer's office one day and I was like, okay, I'm this semester I'm in all 400 level classes and what am I to do now? And he was like, you are to apply to grad school. <laughs> so. Yeah. So I did, I applied and I got in, um, but I had, at that, by that time I had two kids. Um, my Muli is only a year and a half younger than my Hiapo. And so 
all of those first courses were all done pregnant, nursing, pregnant, nursing. Always had a kid with me in class and stuff. Um, but I only ever took one or two classes a semester. And, um, and then once I started grad school, the same thing, I was only in one or two classes a semester because that's all I could handle with two still at home with me. Uh, and I would, bring, I would bring them with me to class, one with me um, to class a lot. And um, sometimes I would leave one with uh, the Lumi Mana Leo, the Anake that are in the Lumi Mana Leo. Are, they were actually my kumu um, when I was at Punana Leo o Honolulu. So they are like ohana to me. Um, so I would leave my, my babies with them when I would go to class. And also it's very much, um, it's actually my kuleana to them that drove me back to be taking those classes, right? Because they're the ones that gave me the language and it's, it was my, it's my feeling that it's my kuleana to perpetuate it, right? Not just use it, but to give it to my kids. And that's what brought me back to the university and there they were. And yep. um, so I finished grad school 2016. Um, and ever since uh, my, my project, my, my final thesis project was um, focused on family land ownership and land ownership options um, in Hawaii specifically. And so since then I've worked in um, Aina conservation type of work quite a bit. I worked at Vai Vai Collective for a couple years, um, two years, the first two years that Vai Vai Collective was um, open, I was one of the managers. Um, and that was a really great experience to grow, to grow my network. Uh, and then a year and a half ago, I started working for Hawaiian Islands Land Trust, which is specifically land conservation work. Uh, and although I don't have a law background, uh, which a lot of the people in the organization have either a law background because it has to do with land transactions and, and ownership, which is super highly legal. <laughs> Um, there's also a lot of um, scientists and researchers that work with us, but um, the, the CEO that started just a few months before I started, she brings with her a focus on Hawaiian culture. Yeah. And so she's bringing that focus to the work that the Land Trust does. So the Land Trust has been uh, in sort of an, a nonprofit organization now for 10 years, but it was a result of a merger 10 years ago. And so prior to that, there were individual island land trusts. Each island had its own. And in 2011, four, one, two, three, four land trusts uh, merged to form Hawaiian Islands Land Trust. There's two land trusts that remain. Moloka'i Land Trust um, is kupa'a in not merging with us, which is totally fine. We actually work with them quite a bit. And so we, we have work on Moloka'i also. And then the North Shore Land Trust remains also. And so for the most part, we don't do work on the North Shore. We will we'll help do work with them just because we're a larger organization, but for the most part, they cover the North Shore of Oahu. And uh, so in the last year and a half to two years that I've been on board, uh, I bring that culture and language focus to our work, um, our, that perspective, I guess. And so the way that we're doing our, our land conservation work has changed a little bit more to be um, quite a bit more heavy on culture and the research behind what those Aina were more than, you know, generally Aina is historied and storied within about a 200 year time frame, which usually involves a lot of ranching, agriculture, that kind of stuff, right? But it doesn't Usually it doesn't tell the story of what that Aina was 
before 200 years, right? And Aina carries a lot of mo'oku ho with it that was previously not being um, acknowledged. And so a lot of what we're doing now in the way that we do land conservation is to include the, the lineal descendants of the areas and include, we do all of the research on our end on, you know, like the rain names and the wind names and the ili, the ili aina within those areas so that we, we are fully understanding of what the kuleana is that we're taking on. So in the, in the case, I guess right now I can share that we are working on a, about a four-year plan to preserve Mahukona on the Big Island in Kohala. And that is a, a little bit over 600 acres. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot of mo'olado there. There's a lot of um, Ike Hawaii there. And it's not all on us as the land trust necessarily. We're working with Nakalaiva'a, which is a navigational organization that's based out of Mahukona also. And so we're working really closely with them and they do the same type of really in-depth uh, cultural research and work. So luckily we have a partner in, in doing that work. Uh, and then, you know, kind of going back a little bit, we, we also, as an organization, prior to like my coming on, had um, acquired properties such as uh, Mauna Wila Heiau, which is on Oahu in Haula. That's a Heiau complex. We have, we now have uh, Aina Steward there. Uh, it's her responsibility to care for the site and also host uh, educational groups there. And then we have uh, on Kauai. So I actually moved to Kauai a year ago to be back to where my, um, my tutu is from originally. And so here on Kauai, we have Kahili, um, which is a, it's a beach, sand dunes, and a muliwai. And we have three part-time stewards here at, on Kauai at Kahili. And I... I actually, part of my move here was because I was managing so much of the Kauai property that it, I just kind of stayed um, yeah. so that I could manage our stewards here. And then on, on Maui, we have multiple preserves that we own. So we own Waihe'e, which is, um, I think Waihe'e is a few hundred acres as well. It's huge. That's a coastal property as well. And then we have Nu'u Refuge, which is in Kaupo. That's a coastal refuge as well. Uh, and then on the big island, we have Kukuau, which is kind of um, Hilo Malka. Uh, it's a forest area and that's over a thousand acres. And we just acquired that recently. That was actually before I came on board, but we haven't we haven't come up with our plan as to what we're going to do with that property yet. So we don't have a steward there on site yet. Uh, really the, the meat of what we do as a land trust is we protect land from development. And so uh, Mahukona has been in danger of development for, for 30 years now. Uh, it's always been owned by different developers and it's currently owned by a developer. And we're just looking to protect it forever so that it can't ever be, ever be developed. And that was the case with Waihe'e over 10 years ago that it was supposed to be a golf course. And we, got all the, we garnered all the funds from different agencies, federal, state, and county to be able to purchase it from the developer and protect it forever so that it can't ever be developed. Um, Okay, I'm gonna stop talking. I want to look at your questions. There's so many questions. Yeah, there's a few questions. Um, so. Let's see. Well, yeah, if you guys have questions too, you can just send them in the chat um, publicly. Um, I did have a few questions too after. <laughs> okay, sure. So why is Aina stewardship important? Um, you know, really we are, uh, we as Kanaka, we're, it's my, perspective that 
we are secondary to everything else that's happening around us. The, mm -hmm. the aina, the ua, the makani, all of those things uh, are far bigger than we are. And the aina really, I think the aina informs us how to be responsible stewards and kanaka. Yeah. And it, I think that the aina guides us in how we should be living, living our lives. Um, you know, you can, <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, you, there are so many lessons on Aina that you can apply to your life. And keeping these spaces protected, uh, it's so important to, to allow our culture to persevere and be perpetuated and in practice uh, every day. You know, all of the places that we protect, if we own it, it's a public space. So everyone can go and experience it and, and have that connection with Aina, which is really important. I think that all, all cultures, not just Hawaiians, have been systematically removed from Aina, not just Hawaiian Aina, right? Like any Aina. My Kane is actually Irish and he's from New York. And he, his lineage has the same, tells the same story. They were uprooted from their lands. They originally lived off of the Aina and they were uprooted and removed and forced out. And all, I think all cultures have that same horrible history that they have to deal with. And that we as an organization can provide spaces for people to reconnect to Aina, whether you're Hawaiian or not, that that, that is grounding for all of us. And so Aina stewardship is important on so many levels. And um, I'm just honored to be able to be a part of this work. Um, what was the reason for the merge? Um, so, Really, as an organization, we are stronger as one, um, as opposed to being multiple, multiple land trust organizations within the same Pai Aina. And even now, you know, there's three land trusts in Hawaii. Uh, we don't, we don't compete against each other. We support each other, but. Hawaiian Islands Land Trust is by far the biggest of the three, and we have the capacity to bring to the table to be able to support the other land trusts. And so in, I think it's my, it's my perspective that it's the, the land trust is in a position now, 10 years after a merger, right, that we can now take on a project like Mahukona, which is it is going to be the biggest project that we've ever taken on. Uh, over 600 acres, it's priced at 16 million right now. And I think that, that a merger is something that allowed us to grow to a point where we can now work on a project that, that is this big, take on a project that's this big. Uh, we don't, Hilt doesn't work with DHHL. We tend to not work with the state. Um, it's really difficult to work with the state. And I'm not, that's not, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying that they, there's a lot of rules and restrictions with the state. Um, and so when, whenever we come across land that's already owned by the state, we tend to not get involved. Um, we generally, we work with private landowners and and land sale uh or or donation um we also i'm sorry i skipped a large portion of the work that we do the we also do um conservation easements whereby we are not the land owner we are the holder of all of the, the developmental rights over the land and so an example of that is um like ulupalakua on Maui and Pu'uohoku on Molokai. Those are huge ranches that 
we don't own the land, but we do hold conservation easements over the land, which does a couple things. One, on our part, it, it means that that land is protected forever because we've taken all the developmental rights from the deed. Uh, generally, it brings the taxes down for the landowner because now there's no developmental rights on the land. Uh, we often get donations of conservation easements by landowners where they want to maintain ownership of their land, but they want to give up all the developmental rights for a tax write-off. A lot of times these are really wealthy landowners, right? So it works well for them because they get a tax write-off, a big tax write-off. It works well for us because we're protecting more land. So we have over 20,000 acres of land that's protected in Hawaii mostly actually because of the, the conservation easements. Um, and so, yeah, so we, don't, we tend not to work with the state um, and also don't work with DHHL. Uh, the state does their own land conservation work also. Uh, yeah. Um, why is it important to have a connection to your Aina? You know, I think, as a Hawaiian, I can say that it's empowering to have a connection to your aina. I know that I personally have connection to my aina here on Kauai, and it makes me feel it makes me feel connected to my kupuna that I never met, kupuna that I never got to meet, but I know that they were once on that aina, and that they they had kuleana to that aina, and so so do I, right? Um, I have connection to Manoa, which that's not actually where my, my Mo'oku Auhau is from, but my, you know, we've been in Manoa now. I'm third generation from Manoa and my, my kids were born in Manoa. So, you know, um, when my kids were born, I kept their placenta and I planted it in our yard in Manoa. And so Lehune has a lychee tree in Manoa and Laiku has a mango tree in Manoa. And my parents still live there in Manoa even though we've moved to Kauai. And I will not ever sell that house because my kids have, there's a part of me and there's a part of my kids that is actually a part of that Aina now, right? And so the placenta actually nourishes those trees and those trees then provide sustenance for our ohana. And those, I think those are the ways that in practice we as Hawaiians ensured connection to aina, right? That, 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 that feeling that I have, right? That I'll never get rid of that land because a part of me is there. It's buried in the land now. And, and something that allowed my kids to survive inside of me is buried in that land. And and then that thing raised a tree. And that tree then is, is actually represents, it, it, it's got a little bit crazy when I was like first, when they, my kids were like very young and the trees were very young and we planted them. And I told my husband, you better not let those trees die because if one of those trees dies, then that means that our kids are in danger. And I put like, I put this like guilt trip on my Connie, like you cannot let those trees die. And so now they're huge actually, my kids are, <laughs> uh eight and ten now awesome. and the trees totally give us fruit and the kids the kids take pride in that tree that is theirs that they get to eat of um yeah and i think you know beyond that my my kids their pico and my pico is here on Kauai um at aina that my ohana has still here and i think that those that's another way that we maintain those those are physical connections that we have with aina that you know, your pico, it represents so many things, and that 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 thing that allowed you to survive in the womb and then be birthed, and then it falls off, and then you put it somewhere significant, and then that becomes that place becomes your pico, yeah. that that aina becomes your pico. Um, now that you're no longer in the womb, you have a you have a different type of pico. Right. And so I think that those are those are the ways that we as Hawaiians um, 
have connection to Aina in practice, but I think that all, all people and all cultures have something like that. Yeah. They just lost it and they were, again, they were systematically pulled from all of those practices so that they didn't, they didn't feel that anymore. They could, they could live anywhere. They could, you, you could be pushed away to anywhere and you would survive because you don't feel that sense of kuleana to anywhere anymore. Yeah. And so that's where getting us back to those, those types of practices and having a sense of kuleana, I think that, that that also allows us to ensure that we're not destroying significant places because we have this sense of responsibility to our places. No, that's amazing, an amazing point. And, you know, that's why I wanted to do this lesson because um, many, I mean, even from this, some people never knew their rain names and their wind names. So going back and researching, I mean, it just shows that we have the resources available, even if, um, you know, in the new paper, all that, um, we can look and find them. So, you know, that's what I'm going to challenge you folks to do over this week break when we don't have class next week is to look up your place names and, you know, try and find more connection. Um, if you go to newpaper.org, or, or, sorry, what is it? Is it newpaper.org? Yeah, the newspaper one, then you can just type in your place name and then a lot of articles will pop up that you guys can look through. Um, but if you need help translating, just let me know, I'm here. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to challenge you folks to to get to know your Aina a little bit more, you know, your Kulaivi or your Aina you currently live now. Um, and yeah, I'm a hollow you makana for bringing that up for us. Thank you. Yeah, and a couple other um, like research methods, you know, in the next couple of weeks as you guys are diving into your places is um, there's Kipuka database, which yeah. is an OHA website that has a lot of um, good, and it's actually like a map that you can click on and so you can click on different, it has information on like um, land titles and that kind of stuff. So you can do research there a little bit also. That's one that I go to a lot when, I, yeah, love it. when I'm looking at Aina for Hilt, that I, I reference Kipuka to try to find um, Inoa Ohana from that area and see if I know any of those people. You know, they probably don't live in that area anymore, but maybe we can find them. Yeah, no, and, and, and as Stephanie wrote, so we have Palmana in Mexico and France. Um, what is your advice to them? Because, you know, we, I, you know every place, like you said, Every culture has a connection to their Aina, but it may be a little different for other cultures. Do you have any advice for um, those Homana? You know, I think, like I said, all of us at one time had a, had a place. Yeah. And had a so, our, yeah, had a pico. And so I can speak for my Kane, right? So my Kane is not at all from Hawaii. He's not Hawaiian. Um, He's never been to Ireland, where his ancestors come from. Um, but he definitely has a responsibility to this place. And I think that maybe wherever you are, find that kuleana. Even if it's not your place, if it's not where your lineage comes from, you have no history, right? Yeah. You are there and you have a responsibility and you know Manoa just like me I grew up in Manoa and my lineage is not from Manoa but Manoa's rains sustained me I grew up in Manoa my whole life and those rains sustained me and those rains sustained my kids and those rains sustained the plants that we planted for my kids uh, when my kids were babies, I planted like all kinds of uala and papaya and stuff, and I made baby food out of it. And so the land provided for my kids, and I have a kuleana to have a connection to the land. And so I think wherever you are, the rain wherever you are sustains you, and the wind wherever you are sustains you. And so find the connection there and and find a way to reciprocate 
the ways in which the Aina is providing for you. Yeah, and the word reciprocate, you know, we take care of the land, the land takes care of us. So it's great. And uh, you know what? Um, it's 740. So if you have to head out, Ahui Ho, like, Mahalo, Makana. But I'm going to open up breakout rooms. I wanted to pose the question, like, what is your kuleana to, or what do you think your kuleana is? Not only to your land, but to your culture, to just what is your kuleana? That is the main question I want you guys to talk about in the breakout rooms, if that, um, you know, if that's okay. And then we'll come stop in in a few of your breakout rooms too. But yeah, Makana, I think I'm going to put you in a room, but Maybe I can switch you around if that's okay. If you want to go vola out with a couple of people, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. Sure. We hold Tamara. Mahalo. Okay. So yeah, let's open. Just what is your kuleana? What do you think your kuleana is to aina, to culture, to everything? Yeah. Did you get invited? Hi. Learning. Oh. Aloha, Carly. Aloha. Aloha. Oh, are you guys in the, oh, you're in Carly's, you're on Haley's lap. Yeah, I think I better go in the other room. Oh, I think I'm in breakout room four. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, so I was your pen pal. Oops, sorry, I had to change room because my sister was in the other room. They're Carly's pen pal. Yes. Oh. Where did she Did Did you get... You got yours, yeah? Did she send you hers? Sure that the next generation gets used to, to seeing it and doing it and so that they can stem... ...to um, get it going for him. Aloha e kumu. Yep, all for Makamai. Makamai. <laughs> Gary already knows my answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just checking out everyone. But in a little bit, maybe like a couple more minutes. I really want to hear what Stephanie, I mean, and Chailani, what do you guys think about the topic? I know I may be kind of um, out of the box, but yeah, I do have some ideas. And if it's hard to explain in in English, no worries, it's all good. Unless you guys spoke already. <laughs> I'm totally over the, I, I know I'm a native, but uh, I I love the culture as if I was born in Hawaii. But I've been only once in, in the island in Hilo and Kona. And yeah. it was really few time, but I feel like I was uh, kind of connected with the uh, with the Aina and with the, maybe the people. Yeah. Uh, and I I used to be a hula dancer, so yeah. uh, I'm interested in, in everything I can learn about. Maybe I, I don't have any family or relatives uh, over there, but uh, me. the story and the Kumus uh, who taught me at the beginning where I was young, uh, it reminded me everything, but that's all. I don't have oh. more. To say. I know you have um, respect for the culture because even when you texted me or you Facebook messaged me about like what is a good appropriate Oli like you know some people just go and just find whatever chant or song and they, they don't really think about it but that just no, told me yeah, yeah well I used to study with uh, Kumu Rai Fonseca so he taught us uh, uh, to do uh, everything with respect and uh, well, to uh, to look for uh, for the information with the correct people. Yeah. Not only because we like something or whatever. Yeah. Not just because it's pretty, but you know, you have a foundation in it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Stephanie, if do you guys have a so aloha aina means love for the land. Do you have that phrase in 
it's in French or Where, I, where I'm living in the south of France, I really take care of everything around me. I take care of my parents. I take care of my land, of my garden, of my with my animals also. Mm -hmm. For me, it's very important to take care of every everything on this earth. Not only my place, but all the earth. Because we are all native from the earth. We are only one, for me, it's only one nation. It's for that I'm, I'm learning a lot of different languages because I want to share uh, with everybody and, and help. If I can help uh, someone, I will be here. <laughs> so uh, I'm taking care of all around, all around me. That's and we're building connections just through Zoom and having these classes. So yeah, we're connected. All of us are connected. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. And we're, um, Stephanie, we call each other cousins over here. So we're all family. Yeah. You call each other cousins. So you can call me cousin. Kumu cousin. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> well. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go check out one more room. But yeah, two more minutes and then I'll let you guys back. Okay. Still there. Still. You know, you can never be separated from it. So that's yeah. one all, I guess. Mm -hmm. On this group. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Love you. Bye. That was good. Hi, guys. Hi. Yeah, just wrapping up. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I'm just going to wrap up. I'll close up and invite you guys all back, but good. Awesome. Oh. Who are you cut are you off? Again. Yeah. I'm here too. That's my goal. <laughs> <laughs> I think I also cut my kind of off because she's not in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, she'll come back. Uh, Carly, yeah. you're awesome though. Thanks. We knew it would yeah, cut me off too. That's why you wanted to go last. <laughs> Mute. Okay. <laughs> Pardon you. Okay, yeah, thank you guys. Um, yeah, I think it's important to have these conversations. Um, and that's what I love about this group is because we're all, I mean, we're comfortable with each other and we're comfortable sharing and, um, you know, bringing these ideas to the forefront. So mahalo. Um, I know these concepts may be kind of different. I mean, but just think Olelo, is connected to everything. So that's why we're doing it, yeah? Uh, but yeah, again, just a reminder before we wrap up, uh, next class is gonna be April 6th. So not next week, the week after. Um, so enjoy a break. And you guys can have a spring break on me one day off from work. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, everything else, I think when I was going into your conversation, everything was so good, you know? Hearing about Kailani's experience and hearing about Stephanie's experience, um, Lehua's for her, Pramakamai, it's all Mekai, and it all works out. So thank you again. Um, if you guys have questions, you can stay behind. I'm going to definitely send Makana a thank you, um, but I know she probably got kicked out of, of the Zoom. But thank you again. If you can, email her uh, with a mahalo, makana at hilt.org. Um, but if not, no worries. I'll send one on behalf of our whole class. So yeah. Thanks, everyone. Mahalo. Yeah, and find out more Mahalo. about Mahalo. Learn on your brain name. If you have questions, email me. Huyo, Stephanie. Huyo. Enjoy Mahalo. your... Mahalo, Reef. Mahalo, Nui. Ahuiho. 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 Bye, Hennessy. Bye, Pamela. Bye, Stephanie. Have a great vacation. I will. Ahuiho. Thank you, Ahuiho. Mahalo, mahalo. Mahalo.